Hi everyone, my name is Bob. I'm from Britain, a town called Ofton in Derbyshire, which is right in the middle of the country. I'll give you five easy tips on how to understand a native speaker. So, the first tip you need to know. Connect and smoothly pronounce two or more words. Without the linking technique, it is impossible to achieve connected speech, which is the natural English sound that we so long for. Without connecting words and sounds, we speak English as if we are eating chips that are crunchy, and at the same time, the chewing and swallowing do not allow us to express our opinion completely and without obstacles. That is why linking, as they say, is a two-way street. You may not use this technique in your speech, but to understand others by ear better, there is no way without it. Let's come back to our examples. Consonant to consonant. Linking. Try to read the following phrases without pausing between the two words. Quite teacher. Pink car. Nice scarf. Did it work? Not tired? <laughs> the rule is quite basic. When one word ends in a consonant and the next begins with the same consonant sound, the two sounds merge into one. That is, we pronounce that sound only once. Feel lucky. Feel lucky. Quiet teacher. Quiet teacher. Pink car, pink car. Nice scarf, nice scarf. It's important to remember these must be the same sounds, not letters, and we remember that one sound can be represented by a different letter, right? Vowel to vowel linking, W, J, R. Let's try to see the logic behind the following transformation. For this, we will need a mirror in front of you. Read the following sentence aloud without pauses between words. During the pause, look at your reflection. In what position are your lips, jaws and tongue when you pronounce the last sound of the first word? And when do you start pronouncing the following? Go on. How about? Few others. So old. I hope you notice that you have to change the position of your lips, jaw and tongue significantly to pronounce the first sound of the second word. Again, this effort, this, this extra effort, in fact, is addition to the pause. That is why, to simplify our lives, we can add the sound w and build a bridge between the first and the second words. Go on! In the first word, we finish pronouncing the sound O. Oh. In the second, we start O. Oh. Without a pause, it will be too difficult for us to do this because the position of the jaw and the lips for these sounds is very different. That's why it's easier to connect them with W. Go one. How about? How about? Few others, few others. So old, so old. Congratulations, the first step towards improving your pronunciation and listening skills is done. Let me share with you the second tip. Did you pay attention to how I said, let me show you? Let me show. Here I've used the contraction. Let me give you some examples of contractions. I wanna go home. Do you want to watch TV? Got to. Have got to, for example, I've got to go now. Have they got to work? Another meaning of contraction, got to, got to. Have got to, have got a. I've got a Ukrainian citizenship. Kidding, I haven't got a U Ukrainian citizenship. I wish I had, but I haven't. Dunno is the combination of the words I don't, 
plus no. I don't know how to speak Japanese. In it, I love this word. In it is the combination of the words isn't it, which, is, which we put at the end of the questions. That's smart, in it. I must warn you that if you look up these expressions in the dictionary, you will not be able to find them. That's because these words are informal contractions or short forms of other words that people use when speaking informally. They are not exactly slang, but they are a little like slang. So the question, what are you going to do, transforms into what are you gonna do? Or what you gonna do? There's two different ways of saying that. When said aloud, you can hear the difference between the two different sentences. It is your choice whether to use informal contractions in your speech or not. But as a listener of English, you really need to be able to understand people who use them. And nearly every native speaker does. It is probably true to say that informal contractions are more common in American English. You will hear these words everywhere from informal conversations in a coffee shop or anywhere else on TV or in the films or movies and even being used by broadcasters for American news. We do use contractions in Britain, uh, my age not as much, but contractions will be ain't it, in it, ain't it, it isn't, uh, in it, which is isn't it, we would use things like watcher, meaning hello, <laughs> or we, we could use word, uh, contractions like dunno. Now, where I come from in Derbyshire, we use dunno all the time. Gonna, yeah, I would use it if I wasn't speaking to a second language person, I would use gonna. Uh, go gonna is going to. Tip three, intonation. Pay attention to stress and intonation. Otherwise, you may seem tactless to someone or even a completely ill-mannered person. You can always find out how to correctly stress a word in the dictionary or in the transcription of the word. It is usually denoted by a stress mark. For instance, in the word apple, the stress is on the first syllable, as can be seen from the transcription a Paul. Regarding intonation, the same phrase said with a different intonation can have a different semantic load. So, in particular, the sentence, you like her, don't you, can be understood in two ways. You like her, don't you? This will be a question. Intonation goes up on the last words. You like her, don't you? Although it is a question, it has an affirmative meaning. Intonation goes down on the last words. Tip four, be lazy. Native speakers are lazy and we don't always use the full sentence. <laughs> I never do. For example, been there? I've been there too. Instead of saying you have been there too. Well, frankly speaking, it isn't called laziness. There is a special term for it, ellipsis. Ellipsis is omitting some parts of the sentence in spoken English to make your speech less formal or to avoid repeating something twice. At the beginning of the sentence, we can omit imperative be. Careful. Pronouns plus auxiliary verbs. Never been to Australia. Sunny outside. Pronouns plus be plus articles. Nice day. Auxiliary verb plus pronoun. Got a minute? Article, the bus is coming, bus is coming. There is and there are construction. Slight problem here. No time to explain. At the end of the sentence, we can omit repeated information. In this case, it's necessary to leave in the sentence. An auxiliary verb. We've never heard of this designer, but our friends have. A verb with a particle to, how about watching a movie? I don't want to. When we answer yes or no questions, we omit everything except for so or not. Is it safe to be here? 
I think not. I think so. Model plus have in past models. Did you leave your phone at work? I must have. If it's necessary to substitute the words, use auxiliary verb for verbs and one or pronouns for nouns. We didn't watch the game, but our kids did. Give me the book, please. Which one? I need to follow the traditions, but I don't know them. If you want to agree or disagree with someone's statement, use phrases with so plus auxiliary verb plus subject or neither nor plus auxiliary verb plus subject. I am interested in Chinese culture. So am I. I haven't been to Japan. Neither nor have we. Slang words. Another great way to enliven your vocabulary is to use slang words. Now let me think of some that we use. We use things like a up. Hello. I do. How are you? Quite simple. Um, bang on. There's a good one. Bang on. It means you're talking too much. Banter. Banter. Now there's a really good one. Banter. Talky talky. You're talking to each other. You're bantering. I am bantering with you. Simple. And last one, a belter. What about a belter? No, not this, not this thing here. A belter. A belter means you said a good joke. You told me a really good joke. It was a belter. It was a really good one. It was a really good joke. It was a belter. And the last tip I will give you today. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't forget that even the English, whether it's American, Chinese, not Chinese, where's Chinese come in? Australian or British, we all make mistakes. Even I have to correct myself, as I'm just doing just now. To be fair, everyone makes mistakes. Pronunciation, now pronunciation. Do you say grass or do you say grass? Do you say garage or do you say garage? Do you say lawn? No, I, there isn't one for that one. Um, it, pronunciation depends on where you come from in the country. If you're in the north of England, us in the south, or we in the south, or we in the Midlands, cannot understand what they're saying, so forget it. Try listening to audiobooks. Listen to films, even if you have the subtitles on the bottom. Just listen, listen and listen and try speaking, repeating what you're hearing. Practice makes perfect. Use and abuse the different tones, the different intonations, the different ways of saying things. Just speak English. Courage of your convictions, that's all it takes. So, put your thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and hit the red button down below. Take care and stay with us at Green Forest. Boom.